Good morning. We're so glad that you're here. I am Kristen Trope, and I'm here on behalf of our missions committee here at Life Point. And today is Faith Promise Sunday, so it's that special day every year that we get to hear from the ministries that we support both here locally and around the world. And our first speaker this morning is Eman, short for Emmanuel, and he and Lindsay Monge have been leaders at The Post since the summer of 2017. They're both graduates of Grace College. They have degrees in biblical counseling and intercultural studies. And their approach to local missions work is relationship-driven. So that can be seen when they bring their own video game systems to the center to play with the youth or involve teens in big life moments like having one of the girls host the gender reveal party of, um, for the birth of their first child, Emery, in 2020. So, Eman, welcome. Thank you so much, everyone, for the invitation to come out this morning. I wanted to share a story uh, that really highlights um, our ministry, what we do in Goshen, and also a uh, few of these photos and your support and what it means for teens creating positive memories or replacing some negative ones, as well as the newer program that we're doing at the Youth Center. Um, yesterday was our pancake breakfast. And it's really a kickoff for the rest of the year. The post has been in Goshen since 2001, so we're entering our 20th anniversary. Two weeks ago, I had a team that came in and really reminded me of why it's important for us to provide a safe place for our youth, uh, building genuine relationships with them, and ultimately leading them to God, Jesus, who is the source of restoration, healing, and love. Uh, the team that came in two weeks ago uh, I've seen him grow up the last almost four years I've been at the Post. And it has been a little while since he's been, he's been there. So he came in, he got screened, and we had small talk. And he's like, yeah, I, I'm an elk right now, so that's why I haven't been at the Post uh, for a little bit. Um, and then all the other teams saw him, and they're like, hey, come to the basketball court. we got to get this game going. And he's one of our, uh, our regular basketball players at the youth center. So we're open till 9. Um, he's on the court playing basketball. The last full game ends around 8.15. A lot of the guys are leaving, but he sticks around. He puts on his music. He's just working on his uh, shots. 8.45 comes. Me, the staff, are beginning to clean up, uh, close the youth center. And he comes to me and says, hey, man, um, I kind of wanted to catch up. Um, 2020 has been really rough for me. So I asked him, like, hey, how, how has it been rough for you? And then almost just all at once, he said some, like, three heavy things and he packed it back as if this was the first time he's had a chance to really talk about it with an adult. He tells me in 2020, uh, his mom kicked him out three times, and the third time, he just kind of cut him off. He shares with me that his dad is no longer putting in the work, so he doesn't count him as someone in his life. His grandma's been the only consistent one. He, the grandma's brought him in into her home in Elkhart, so that's where he's been staying. So there's a lot I wanted to unpack here and just learn more. But then, like, right away, the second thing happened. And he's like, and then I had a cousin almost die. He got into drugs, became addicted, and led him to be suicidal. He shared some details, and him and his family called the cops at the right moment, at the right time, and they were able to uh, rescue his cousin before he died by suicide. You know, I'm, they're sitting just, you know, we're, we're getting ready to close, and he's just saying these heavy stuff. And then, like, the third thing he says, and then I had another cousin in 2020 who was in this altercation. There was a gun that was pointed at him. It went off, um, and the bullet just grazed his head. So luckily, his cousin's still around. So here is this teen who I know um, is trying to graduate. He's struggling with school, but he's dealing with all these hardships and life is kind of throwing his away. But something I really learned from our teens is resilience. And I've learned so much from them as far as how they bounce back when life it just gets hard for them. But I knew um, that he trusted me and some of the staff that he was sharing this with as well. Um, and that he knows that the post is a safe place that he can go to, even though it's been a while, he knew that we were going to be open, that we would just welcome him in and just a place for him to just kind of take his mind off of things. And I really wish... Uh, this was an isolated story, 
for the staff and me, we kind of hear these stories a lot throughout the week with different teams. You know, with all this trauma, they're getting all these negative memories in their life. And this is something where I want to uh, transition to some of these pictures. You know, your support in our local mission field is really helping provide a space where teams can create positive, great memories to replace some of those negative ones. Uh, one of my favorite times of the year is the first Tuesday of every month. There's a, a picture on the your right, I think, up here. Um, the first Tuesday of every month is our monthly birthday party. So we decorate our cafe, what we call our concession stand. So the teams know every Tuesday of the birthday of that month will really highlight them. And for me, it always brings a smile on my face when I see these teens who are rough around the edges, tough, but they loosen up and they act like little kids just singing happy birthday to each other. So they look forward to this happening every month. And they know even if they may not get their own birthday party at home, they know at the post um, they'll be celebrated. And then the other photo is a newer program we started in August called Jobs for Life. It's a 12 week program where teens can choose to invest in themselves to learn job related uh, skills, how to write a resume, how to handle themselves in an interview. We bring in actual hiring managers to conduct mock interviews so they can practice those skills. We also have a resource panel bringing in uh, folks from La Casa and Terra, for example, teaching the teens what they can do now, what they have access to when they turn 18. So your support has been really meaningful giving a chance for our teams to go through our programs where they can get skills to impact themselves now and also for the upcoming years. Your support is helping them have an avenue where they can get positive memories to replace some of the negative memories. And lastly, but not leastly, I am so thankful for your prayers. Oftentimes, it does feel like spiritual warfare that we're going through, but we are on the side of victory, and we have been seeing victories. And I'm so thankful for this one team we have a safe place where he can come in, get his mind off things, and just be able to share and get prayed over. Thank you. Thank you, Amen. Uh, I'm going to share briefly about the window. The Wind is another ministry that we support. It's just less than two miles from here in downtown Goshen. It serves people um, facing needs in our community. So I just recently talked to Ed Swartley, the director at the window, to ask how the last year has gone with all of the challenges we've had. So he gave me some interesting statistics. Uh, a year ago, in March of 2020, they were serving about four, a little over 400 families every month through the food pantry. Last month, that had grown to over 800. A year ago, they were serving um, every month over 1,500 individuals in addition to the families, and now that number is over 2,400. They've also been serving about 120 to-go or meals on wheels, meals, every day. So I asked him, how have you been able to maintain and serve such an increase? And he shared that the community has really stepped up. Churches like us have continued giving. People donated parts of their stimulus checks. And Meyer, our local Meyer, even donated $15,000 in gift cards um, to support what they do there. He shared that their heart is just to come alongside people in need, whether that's providing food, clothing, or showers, or helping to pay for counseling. So Ed asks that we remember them in prayer as they just are serving people in crisis in tangible ways. Now we're going to take a few minutes to see some videos made by our other ministries we support. So take a look. I'm Kathy Fulton, and this is my husband, Mark Fulton. We're missionaries in the Church of God in Haiti. Where we work in a hospital. This is where we are now. We're actually sitting on one of the benches where the patients usually sit. Today is Mardi Gras, and so the external, what do you call it in English? Outpatient. <laughs> is closed today, so there's not too many patients. So the only patients here today is the emergency department, which is uh, behind our back. And uh, so the ambulance is getting ready to transfer one of those uh, patients. Uh, from the emergency room to a larger facility down the road. So 
we're uh, thankful that uh, we can serve the community in this way. Each morning, typically, when we have patients here, uh, the, there's someone from the staff that will come out and sing and pray. And the patients sometimes do a short devotion. All the care here is done in the name of God. It's called the Church of God Hospital. Oh, <laughs> the ambulance really wants to be in this video. <laughs> And we have a variety of departments here. We're a rural hospital, so um, we do a lot of things here, but we also do stabilize and recur. Mark, can you talk about some of the departments we have here? Yeah, we have 65 patient employees. Our, our goal is to empower the indigenous uh, employees, physicians, nurses, and all the support staff so that they can be employed here in this country to take care of, of the people in their own country. We're here to facilitate that. So, we don't see patients as much as we do administrative and support. So we've been thankful for you guys for the support that you've shown us. Uh, the departments here that we have that you've helped support, we have a lab, we have internal medicine, we have pediatrics, we have uh, obstetrics and gynecology, we have an emergency department, radiology, a prosthetic lab, dentistry, eye care, vaccinations, and a few other things. Yeah, quite, quite a few things going on here. LifePoint has helped make all of this possible with prayers, with finances, sending teams, and it's just been a joy to build the relationships over the years with folks at LifePoint. And one of these days, we'll actually get to be there again in person, in three dimensions. Yes. Uh, we're waiting for uh, things like, oh, pandemics to uh, subside some. We know that's going to happen, and we know one of these days we'll be able to reach you again. We're looking forward to it. Hopefully soon. But until then, God bless you. Thank you for all that you do in the kingdom, not just here, but around the world. We're blessed. We're grateful. Thank you. Hey, Life Point. This is Corey Martin, chaplain of Dale Park County Jail. I'm here with the jail ministry staff, uh, Sun Ben, to my left, uh, Becky, Roach, and Holly Young. Uh, your generosity allows us to be here every day at the jail, uh, doing Bible studies, passing out Bibles, free tattoo removal. We do housing, uh, reentry housing for our inmates. Uh, and it's because of the support we get from your church and other churches in Elkhart County that allow us, allow us to do this. So we're grateful for your support, and we're sorry we can't be with you in person this year. Hopefully things get back to normal soon, and we can be with you in person. Thank you. Hello, Life Point Church. My team and I at Silent Blessing Staff Ministries are very thankful for each of you. And we are praying that you are doing well in this season. We also recognize the sensitivities and concerns going on in our country right now. We pray that you all stay safe and stay healthy. We thank God for you and for your partnership with Silent Blessings for over 21 years. Wow, that's a long time. Thank you. Because of your faithful support in finances and in prayer, we are able to keep going strong. We continue to seek God's wisdom and discernment to help us create resources and to offer open arms and a loving hug and any words of affirmation that the Lord would like to use us to speak to the families that are affected by deafness. We want to say thank you for your partnership. We are able to help spread the truth and to encourage all people that God is an intentional God and he loves them. Our work could not be done without you. Thank you. We are very excited to share with you that Dr. Wonder's workshop Season 5 will be launching soon. We have been receiving emails from deaf and hard of hearing children about how much they love the show. They are able to learn about who God is with their parents. This is beautiful. Not only that, Dr. Wonder's Workshop is now airing three times a week in Puerto Rico. We are able to make impacts there too. I want to share a testimony from a mother who sent us an email a while ago. She said, This issue 
deaf children's ministry has been so heavy on my heart for about a year. And after talking to a friend, a mom who is also deaf and has hearing children, we have a similar need, a children's ministry that welcomes deaf children. We are motivated, but we don't know how or where to start. When I read this message, it really touched my heart. It inspired us to create a new project called Silent Lessons Parents Outreach Manifest. The purpose of this project is to bring parents together and to encourage them to disciple each other and find their purpose in life as parents of deaf and hard of hearing children. We want to equip parents to make a difference in their own churches where deaf and parents are both welcomed. Right now, we have about 10 mothers who are willing to serve as volunteers to assist us in this project. This is a huge undertaking, and we pray that you will continue to pray for us and pray with us as we step up to advance God's kingdom. As you are watching this video, I ask for you to pray alongside of us for these things that God will continue to provide financial support, pray that we continue to move forward with humble hearts, pray that we would be filled with the Holy Spirit, and that we would become representatives of His love. Pray for our health and for our well-being, and pray that we continue to seek God's face every day. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to seeing what God does through your church and your communities in Goshen. Love you all. And our last speaker today is Rod Tackett. He serves as Retta's Advancement Director. He's been on staff for nearly four years, joining his wife Angie, who's been there for 16 years. And he is in charge of Reddit's marketing, events, and fundraising. Good morning, Life Point. Thank you so much for having me here this morning. Um, you guys do an incredible job. These are some awesome ministries, and uh, it's always a pleasure to be here with you, man, too. Um, Post is doing some incredible work in the lives of teens. So I work at Reddit. Pregnancy Clinic and Family Resources. Um, I joined Reddit's staff in July 2017. My wife was 38 weeks pregnant, um, went in for a routine ultrasound, and we found out that our daughter didn't have a heartbeat. At that point, um, that's one of those life changing things. And, and I took some time off work. Um, I was working in an awesome nonprofit in Bristol at that point, but but during my time off, I knew um, we were starting grief counseling. Uh, but in the midst of that season, I knew that I needed to do something to honor my daughter's life and to get into um, kind of in a ministry environment. And the position opened up at Retta, where my wife had been working um, basically out of high school, um, had done several different things there. And, and so um, was really really excited to join on Reddit staff because I had heard these stories about what God was doing, these women who would go through their abortion recovery support program and find healing and freedom and hope and forgiveness. I would hear these stories about these lives being saved through through um, pregnancy testing and, 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 and ultrasound. And so to join Reddit staff uh, was an incredible honor. Uh, and pleasure, and so I'm I'm excited to be on staff. And so this morning, I just want to share a little bit about our services, just so you're aware of them, but also what God is doing in the midst of these services, because He is doing a lot of stuff. So first up, uh, we have our our pregnancy test, STD testing, treatment, and our first trimester ultrasounds. So uh, basically, I, I'll just share this: what LifePoint gave last year would have provided for 20 life-saving ultrasounds last year. So thank you guys. Those are lives, those are families that are transformed because of what you chose to give on this Sunday. So that matters. So thank you. Um, 
And so, so when when our parents come in, uh, moms are coming in for a pregnancy test, ultrasound. Um, our hope, obviously, is that they're going to choose life for their children. But it's never about just saving a baby. It's about it's about helping transform family and pointing them to Jesus. Because life change isn't going to happen unless people meet Jesus and experience the Holy Spirit working in their lives. And so, um, so when our moms come in, if, if, if they choose life, we want to connect them with our parent coaching. If they don't, though, and we, and we do have those folks who, who don't, um, we're still there for them through our abortion recovery support program. Um, but I want to go back to our medical, our medical stuff, our, our pregnancy tests and ultrasounds. Uh, recently, um, within the last two weeks, we had a, a, a mom of three come in and had shared just that um, she found out she was pregnant. She immediately came in and said, I'm having an abortion. I can't do this. I have a little one at home. I can't do this. Um, went through pregnancy tests, went through ultrasound. And then, and then after talking with our nurse, she said, okay, I'm going to parent. I can do this. That's awesome. That's life saved. Um, she signed up for our parent coaching. We're praying that she will come to that. Um, but you guys helped make that possible. Um, so then uh, through our medical services, um, not all of our clients are abortion-minded. And so we, uh, we, we also offer pregnancy loss support. So um, just like my experience, we don't always have good news to give our parents during an ultrasound. And so we want to have something available for them. So we have pregnancy loss support for those who've experienced miscarriage and stillbirth. Because that's really difficult to navigate through because you're still parents, but you don't get to actually live that out, and that's really hard. And so we want to be there for you. On the other side of that is our abortion recovery support because we know that, that there are moms and dads, men and women, who have been part of an abortion decision, have regret from that decision. And sometimes they're sitting right here in our churches. There are women, there are men who have been part of abortion decisions sitting in our churches that, that feel like God can forgive anything except this one thing. And that's not true. Satan wants you to live in shame and regret and despair, but God wants you to live in freedom. It's the freedom that he has come to set you free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. That's what God's Word says. And so we offer abortion recovery support because we want people outside of church and inside of church to find freedom, forgiveness, and hope in Jesus Christ. We, um, we had a, uh, an abortion recovery uh, support retreat last fall, and one of, uh, one of the women who went through that um, didn't have a relationship with Jesus. She does now. Um, during that four-day retreat, and then we do a, a year of aftercare after that because we want to continue to help these women, these men, to walk out their freedom. It's a process. We have to be reminded constantly of who we are in Christ, don't we? We, we like to forget who we are in Christ. And so, um, so this woman found uh, a relationship with Christ, met him. Her life has changed now. Um, so you guys helped make that possible. Um, we also offer uh, parent coaching, I had mentioned. So this is one-on-one -on -one parent coaching for moms, dads, couples. Um, they're going to meet with a parent coach to really help them through. They can, they can come in during first trimester of pregnancy and go through their kids' teen years if they want to stay with us the whole time. Um, our clients average three years with us, though, which is awesome. So they're coming to us initially, and then they're walking with us. Um, for continued support during those early years of, of really raising their children. Um, this is pretty cool. So I had the opportunity to film, um, film someone's story a little while back, one of our clients, and she shared that um, before she had come to Loretta, um, she grew up in an abusive home and, and took those things that she had learned and was essentially – hurting her children. Um, she didn't have a relationship with Christ. And through her time in parent coaching, mom's coaching, kind of one-on-one, -on -one, not only did she meet Jesus and stop abusing her children, but now she is attending church. 
and she is discipling her kids. And so God has transformed that family forever. That's awesome stuff that's happening. Um, the last thing that we do is healthy sexual boundaries education. So in the state of Indiana, abstinence is required to be taught wherever sex ed is taught in schools. And so um, some of them like to outsource that. So we have an opportunity to get into schools um, around Elkhart County and share uh, about the importance of abstinence. And so those are some of the things that we're doing. Um, but I want to share one more really cool thing before I finish, and that's this. Retta has grown to the point of needing a new facility, and so we launched a capital campaign, um, quiet phase of a capital campaign last January, $4.5 million. And um, as I stand here today, we only have 580000 left to raise. Um, God is doing some incredible stuff. We're, we're building a new facility in downtown Elkhart, breaking ground next month. And uh, it's going to double our square footage, but triple our capacity to serve the community. And so we are really excited for everything that God is doing, how he is providing. And, um, yeah, we're just really looking forward to that. So our hope is to move in then by February of 2022. We're still in downtown Elkhart. Half of our clients are walking, so we want to make sure that we're where the people are. So we're moving two blocks north, one block east of our current facility. And um, we're really excited. So you guys, because of your support, because of what you guys have been doing, we're at that point where we're able to, to grow and expand. So thank you all so much. And, um, yeah, I just appreciate this opportunity. And isn't it uh, so good just to hear um, the ministry that is happening uh, through some of these ministry partners in our city and around the world. Um, I'm reminded by some words of Jesus um, before he left his disciples in Mark uh, 16 and verse 15. And he says, he told them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone, to everyone. And I'm just thinking about like these groups that we just heard from today and all the people that they're preaching the good news to, to the people in Haiti who are are, they're helping with physical hurts, you know, in the emergency room, and they're preaching them, and they're training people there to do that work. Silent blessings, preaching the good news to those who are hard of hearing. The jail ministry, preaching the good news to those that are, people that are actually in our county jail. And Retta, the people that are preaching the good news to, to future moms who are struggling with what even the future looks like. Or we got people in at the Post and Lindsay who are preaching the good news to, to teens who are just trying to figure out life in really hard circumstances. And they're being the hands and feet of Jesus. And then the window. I mean, those numbers of how many families that they're feeding and how many people is incredible, like what they're doing. And what is most, like, um, what's most impactful for me is when in, um, in the book of John, when Jesus talked right before he left his disciples, he said, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so, I'm, so I am sending you. Our God is a God of mission, and, he, and, and that mission is of his presence. And so these people that we are supporting are actually being the hands and feet. They are sitting with these people in the most crucial moments of their life and preaching the good news to them. And it's so awesome to be a part of a church that sees that. And it's really, it's really easy for us to sit in these pews every week and to just forget about the mission of God that's happening around the world. But on these Sundays, I'm reminded about that our God is a God of mission, and he is working and he is moving all throughout the world. And we get to be a, a part of that. We get to be a part of that even just by supporting them. We call this Faith Promise um, Sunday because, um, as we've kind of instructed, um, it's a moment for us in faith to step out and say we're going to support missions from money that we might not even sure we have yet. This comes from uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 3. Um, Paul is talking about a church in Macedonia, and, and he says this. He says, now I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God in his kindness has done through the churches in Macedonia. They are being tested by many troubles. I get that. They're being tested by many troubles, and they are very poor. 
but they are also filled with abundant joy, which has overflowed in rich generosity. For I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford, but far more, and they did it on their own free will. So that's, that is the, the text that we get this idea of faith promise, that we step into a moment of faith where we get to come alongside and say, God, I'm not sure where this money is coming from, um, but I want to step in faith to, to support the people in our community and around the world that we um, that are being the hands and feet of Jesus to, to people, to everyone. And it's such a good thing. And so I want um, just to remind you that, that you might be curious of like how this works. And so just to give real clear instructions that as you walked in, if you're here in person, um, that there was a pledge card on the table back there. And you're, um, you can look at it, fill it out, pray about it. Um, and you can put those in the block offering boxes as you leave. Um, if you're online, uh, there might be a moment that you're able to click on to go to our online pledge card. Um, if you want to do that here in person, um, you can also do that uh, by going uh, to lifepointgoshen.org backslash faith promise. And there's a digital pledge card that you can fill out there. And I just ask for you to do that prayerfully and just see what God can do through you, through our resources as he impacts um, people uh, around the world. Our God is a God of mission and uh, he is faithful, and it's so good to hear how, how he's working. And um, I also just want to even ask, you know, what, what can I do just beyond finances? How can I partner with the mission of God? Who is he placed right next to me that I can be his hands and feet, that I can preach the good news to them by being the presence of Jesus in their life, by just loving them and serving them like Jesus served us? So we're going we're gonna to close in song. Um, and uh, just a reminder, too, um, that we are, we are going to take communion at the end of the song like we do each week. And so if you forgot to grab those elements, uh, feel free to go out and grab those. Um, but just to be reminded of the, the sacrifice of um, Jesus on the cross. And that is what, it's, that's why we're doing what we're doing now. That's why uh, Rod's doing what he's doing with Red, and that's why Eman's doing with the Post, and all these, they're doing it for the name of Christ and the sacrifice that he did on the cross. So would you pray with me as I pray for these organizations and as we prepare to close in song and communion? Heavenly Father, I thank you um, for um, examples of people who have given up um, maybe their fleshly desire for success in the world, that to represent you through organizations that are showing the love of Christ to such a vast group of different people. God, it's our privilege. It is our privilege to be able to support these organizations. We thank you for Rod for coming to share and for all the work that's being done through him and through his team at Reda. God, we thank you for Eman and for him showing up here today to talk about the stories and the way they're impacting the people um, at the Post, the students, God, that um, many of us even know here in our community that go there. God, we thank you for the Fultons in Haiti, for Silent Blessings, for the jail ministry, for the window, God, the way that they um, are literally loving the people that you put in front of them in the best way they know, the real tangible things. So, God, I I pray, um, God, for whatever um, you have put on the people's hearts here um, or on at home, God, that we would give generously, that we give faithfully you know, to, to support the ministries um, that you have called us to support. And we are so thankful, so thankful for that opportunity. So, God, as we, as we sing, um, God, we lift up um, our prayer to you and we declare, God, that you are a faithful God. I know as Heather um, mentioned in the beginning of the service, God, there are many things even in our own life that we're trying to trust you with. God, we're trying to trust you um, with future. We're trying to trust you with our finances, trying to trust you with our marriage, our relationship. Um, God, maybe a, a person that is um, close to us but far away and we don't even know how to love them well. Now we know that it is by your spirit that you enable us to love and inspire us that you enable us to trust. So that as we sing this song, God, I pray that you would help us to release the grip of the things we're holding on to, put them in your hands, and trust you that you will make a way. In your name we pray. Amen.